Hello, Professor Chia. Thank you so much for your time and for meeting with us today. It's my pleasure to be with you today. Well, uh, 2012, what a big year in terms yes. of elections, yeah. mm -hmm. right? I mean, we still have, of course, the December elections here in South Korea. Mm -hmm. But uh, more recently, in the U.S., President Barack Obama got his second term. Mm -hmm. In China, we're seeing this new leadership um, change, first time in 10 years under Xi Jinping. Yes. Um, let's just jump right into this. I'm going to throw you a very general question. How is this expected to affect global affairs? I don't think there will be major change in global affairs, but actually each country will be preoccupied with domestic politics. Economy is the primary concern of any uh, leadership in every country, in major country. But actually we will see the continuation of the current trend. The, actually the politics will be over, overridden by the economy and a trade issue will become the major issue. But actually with the uh, emergence of new leadership, they will be seeking more opportunities to cooperate with each other because they clearly well recognize the interdependence among themselves in handling those issues. But under the surface, there will be a competition. Who will be the real major leader in right. the 21st century? So Xi Jinping needs to show the, the Ch Chinese public about his leadership domestically and as well as externally. On the other hand, Barack Obama also needs to kind of a diplomatic uh, success, actually, because he doesn't have much in success in the, in the first term, but he needs to have uh, more successes in the second term, and, but also he really preoccupied with the domestic politics and especially economy and job, job, job. That would be the primary concern. So, but we will see kind of ironic or paradoxical nature of global trends, uh, cooperation on one hand, competition on the other. But also we have to take into account the rise of the rest. Russia, Brazil, India, all these countries will become the major players in the coming years because they have real powerhouse in domestically because they are uh, very rich in resources. So under the G2 kinds of uh, structure, we will see the rise of the rest. It kind of mix of bipolar plus multipolar politics in the coming years. Mm. So established power, uh, going against the rising power, very yeah. quick mm -hmm. rising power, mm -hmm. and like you mentioned, so I would imagine alliances are going to be very critical in determining a lot of uh, dynamics on the world scene. Mm -hmm. um, let's actually talk a little bit about President Barack Obama. I mean, his first term, what was his policies towards North Korea like? Actually, initially, he took quite different approach compared to the previous administration, the Bush administration. Bush administration has been, actually was regarded as kind of neocon approach toward North Korea, more hardline policy. So initially, Barack Obama adopted a more soft line approach, negotiation, engagement, dialogue with North Korea. But actually, he was challenged by North Korean uh, the experiment of, of nuclear explosion and also missile tests. So he could not pursue his policy line anymore. So he changed his policy, quite similar to the last period of the Bush administration. So I think the second term of Barack Obama, I think he will maintain the same posture vis-a-vis -vis North Korea. So while emphasizing dialogue engagement, but he will be putting more emphasis on actions taken by North Korea, concrete actions toward denuclearization of North Korea. Unless North Korea takes such steps, it would not be possible for Barack Obama to change his policy line. So Barack Obama's second term policy will be quite like his first term, mm. no big change. Okay, so um, it's a quite interesting dynamic. I mean, if we throw, of course, South Korea into the mix, there's U.S. and South Korea with a very strong alliance, mm -hmm. and then China and North Korea. It's no secret that China is North Korea's strongest ally. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we have, let's focus on that alliance a little bit. Mm -hmm. Under Xi Jinping, can we expect any major changes in terms of North Korea and China? Uh, first of all, I think this North, South, uh, I mean, that China's policy toward North Korea will be the same in, in phrase peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula, but the conditions and terms of peace and stability might change. I think China is reviewing its external policy, including North Korea policy, very much. Over the years, North Korea has become liability rather than asset for China, because China has recognized the limits of its influence in determining or changing the North Korean behavior very much. But actually, they need to have a better relations with new leadership in North Korea, Kim Jong-un leadership. Because mm -hmm. actually, because of that, 
China would be much softer toward Kim Jong Un leadership initially to probe or to send maybe sending some some positive signal toward North Korean leadership. For example, the Chinese new leadership wants to have a good uh, cooperative relations with North Korea, and also. But I I I I think in, in as time goes by, they will be putting more emphasis change that they would not use the word reform. Right, they rather they use the word modernization or change of North Korean policy internally and externally very much. But actually, of course, Xi Jinping mentioned about this Korean War. It was the right war like that. But it was rhetoric. It, that was the uh, was rhetorical is to sue the North Korean leadership. But in in, in in real substantive thing, I think China wants some kinds of change in North Korea taking place by using the economic leverage vis-a-vis -vis North Korea. But see, you say that it's become more of a liability mm -hmm. for China, but we're seeing also U.S., it seems like it's trying to build this uh, network of alliance mm -hmm. around China. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. talking, of course, not only with um, Japan, but uh, in fact, that is a major alliance there. It's going to play a role. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so then a lot of people, observers, are saying that China's going to cling mm -hmm. onto North Korea's alliance. Oh, yes, uh, of course. Uh, there's kinds of another dimension I just missed because that was the U.S.-China relation. Right, right. That was not the fact which influenced uh, the Korean policies very much. But from 2010, we have seen the rise of U.S.-China dimension in influencing the inter-Korean affairs very much. So I think there will be some kinds of uh, the uh, the, uh, the influence you can see coming from U.S. China relation. We cannot underestimate that, but it, I hope it, it would not become a competition between China and the United States over Korean Peninsula. That would be a kind of challenge for South Korea to resolve. How we can make these two great powers come together to solve this issue? Over the years, there is a clear agreement between China and the United States on peace and stability, but they disagree how we accomplish that. That means uh, the process and the terms of peace realization on the Korean Peninsula. But I would see some, some, some exchange of ideas and views in coming in, uh, months and to see, uh, to probe each other's position on this issue very much. So I see probably after the inauguration of Barack Obama in January, there will be a lots of, lots of shuttle diplomacy going on between the two capitals. Oh, I'm sure we can imagine that. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that it's important for Xi Jinping and the new leadership to develop good relations mm -hmm. with Kim Jong Un, because actually, relatively speaking, it hasn't been very long since Kim Jong Un himself, mm -hmm. of course, took mm -hmm. the top spot, right? And uh, we actually had Kim Jong Un send a congratulatory message. He basically said the traditional DPRK China friendship, which has developed down through generations, mm -hmm. will continue to grow in conformity with the wishes of the two peoples. Now. How important is it, let's take the perspective of North Korea, mm -hmm. for North Korea to establish relations with Beijing's new leaders? So actually, you should, we should go back to the Kim Jong-il, Hu Jintao summit. They first, they agreed they will restore, actually respect the traditional relation between China and North Korea. And also, they would like to strengthen strategic dialogue between the two countries. From Kim Jong-un's perspective, he needs the blessing or support coming from the new Chinese leaders very much. So I think that's that message, uh, which was sent by Kim Jong-un to the Chinese leader, very, I think significant, very sign. significant activity. We would like to restore respect, that means the traditional, traditional blood of, uh, the actual brotherhood between, mm. between these two countries, and also the party-to-party -party relation is much more important than the state-to-state -state relation between these two countries. So Kim Jong-un is sending a kind of relative kind of uh, probing message, not really confirming, the probing message toward the Chinese leaders. So we'd like to uh, continue to our relations with China. So that means a traditional one. But actually, I don't know what would be the coming uh, challenge ahead of between China and North Korea. Maybe they are, they are trying to expand the economic cooperation in recent months. So they will continue to so. But in the political term and then, uh, the, the diplomatic front, I think there are some disagreements between China and North Korea. Once we get into this uh, real substantive things like well, how we can denuclearize one, how we can improve the relation between China, I, I mean, the, I mean North Korea and the United States, who should take the initiative in doing so? What kinds of initiative should be look like? Should be uh, should it look like? I think that would when it comes down to nuts and bolts uh, about diplomatic front, I think there is some kind of uh, uh, maybe not the friction, kinds of disagreement or differences between these two countries. 
it's not just uh, China and the U.S. South Korea, we need both countries as well. Definitely. Um, yes. So in terms of diplomatic policies or strategies that we can play regarding mm. these two G2 nations, mm -hmm. powerful, powerful countries, um, what is the recommended course of action we should uh, embark on? Uh, of course, I think that we need to have a strong alliance relations with the United States. At the same time, we need to have more strategic cooperation with China. Actually, just going beyond the economy and trade, we need to talk about this military issues and security issues with China. But I think the South Korea should be more clear on its position on specific issues, like a human rights or something like that, in general, in global terms. Actually, we must be very clear on specific issues. That's a principle-oriented approach toward each country is very necessary one. But we have to take into account is a there a, could be a limit we can play in among these two giants. But actually, in, if we have a, uh, other parties like the Australia or uh, some countries in uh, out of the region mm -hmm. can which can cooperate with South Korea on specific issues, as in South Korea needs to have developed needs to develop a multidimensional uh, diplomatic network, just so going going beyond the, these two giants. Right. So actually, we need what I call over the years is like a minilateralism. So, uh, to borrow the word you used earlier, kind of a rebalancing for us too. Not really rebalancing. <laughs> actually, actually bring these two two giants into into the same boat, uh, and then walk them to uh, walk and make them to walk with each other. I think this over the years, for example, we discuss about the, there's a friction between the United States and China over North Korean issue. Mm -hmm. There's, there could be a difference between Korea and China over this North Korea issue. But North Korean issue is, could be the uh, asset for South Korea to utilize, bring them all together on the same boat. So a South Korea initiative approach toward the North Korea would be the, the one factor. The other one is like the, how we can um, create a more stable, uh, pr prosperous Asia-Pacific region, uh, putting more uh, uh, common agenda items uh, among these countries together. I want to broaden the scope, not just North Korea, but amidst this backdrop of um, East Asian affairs mm -hmm. and just the international um, environment, mm -hmm. the dynamics changing so rapidly, mm -hmm. uh, what approach do we need to take? So I, I'm imagining it's going to be like you said uh, regarding building up a network, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that build the issue-based network is a, is a thing I think the South Korea should pursue. So there, for example, climate change issue, human rights issue, or knowledge sharing, or development issues, all these issues can be uh, easily uh, used by, the, by South Korea in promoting or forging a network of, uh, uh, of common concerns. I see that, for example, we can bring in Laos, Myanmar, or Cambodia as a program or knowledge sharing, or the human resource development program. It's more generic. Uh, is uh, is more uh, appealing to the international norms and international standard. If it's so, I think that it will be much beneficial, and uh, South Korea can have its own diplomatic uh, uh, room for maneuver maneuvering, very much. Well, I think our talk today was actually very encouraging regarding these changes in leadership in some of the most powerful countries. But it's quite challenging. It is challenging. So there's a lot of work definitely yeah. cut out yeah. ahead. Mm -hmm. But there is a feature that seems to be harmonious with all of these different I hope powers. so, but it's kind of opening up an era of opportunity, so we should be able to exploit those opportunities to serve our national interest very much. Okay, well, uh, we shall look forward to the next term of leadership for all the newly elected leaders. I hope but so. um, in regards to this interview, thank you so much for your time again and for your insight. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.